I missed tapping it last time I did it, so we're going to try it this time, see if I can get it. It'll be a hind joint that I put in there to test it with, so... But, uh, yeah, tap it up. That's going to do perfect. How can you not love 3D printing? Man. Uh, I think I decided last time I made this, and this is the one-piece version, which is not what I'm going to be making. I'm going to be making a two-piece that they overlap here and split, and then these bolts clamp them together uh, with the thing. seems to me that I decided to make them with uh, button heads next time instead of the countersinks, and it had to do with the ball joint. Uh, the ball joints I got at the time, oh man, the the holes and the threads in there, they were all cattywampus. I mean, you could, you could put the bolts into the ball joint and hold it there and just see that they were not lined up well at all. These solid ones are for a different deal. They're going to be hind joints. Part of the reason why I don't want to... Uh, do the one piece is because trying to get the accuracy of lining these up to be exactly the same distance that proved to be a nightmare on the first ones so with the two piece there's going to be just a little bit of flex there you know few thou ten thou at the most maybe which is basically what's needed because if these holes because of the way i have to clamp them and hold them are off at all if the cross shaft is either too wide and pushes the balls out in each one, or it's too narrow and the bolts pull it in too hard, it will bind the heim joints. Okay, that and I don't want that, so I'm going to do the two piece style. Out here, okay. Food's here. oh wow, shit, okay, food's here, gotta go. Hopefully, it'll focus in here pretty, pretty well, but uh, there's a little channel in here for clearance when it goes against the shock tower. Uh, that's that's pretty much all it took for carrier and then I've got the brim here for adhesion uh, did a little infill there hopefully that'll come out pretty easy um, there should be some infill back here for the countersink hole um, I'm gonna have to start fighting you know dealing with that but uh, while it's kind of hard to tell but Roughly at the same level where it did all the support structure up to, I don't know, somewhere around in there. I was real worried because when it was printing, it was, it was, the, the, the edges were floating up. It was like it was warping and cupping. And I almost shut the print off and I thought, you know, I'm just going to let it go until it actually fails, fails. And, uh, oh, yeah, here we go. That's, I can't focus on the camera, so I can't tell if the camera's focused. Um, but you can see that lip there, and, and it ended up correcting itself. And so, even though it's not a perfect print, uh, it should work just fine for what I'm doing. Um, that's the hope, at least, we'll see. Well, let's see if we get <clears throat> lucky here and we can just tap on it and break it loose. I pushed it down in. It, uh, <laughs> it printed the threads in there. Hopefully I can uh, get this out without uh, damaging some damaging, uh, damaging them so much that I can't use them. Try some needle nose pliers here. Ho oh, ho! Nice.
<laughs> if I would have thought about it, I would have gone in, done like I did with the other model and modified it, and I would have made that hole go all the way through as a pass-through for clearance on that tap, since that's not a bottoming tap. Not sure where it centers in the video, but wow, not bad. Not bad. I think I can live with that. All right, well, what I need is to be able to get that on there. And that works. <laughs> if I don't have bolts, I just might put a couple of these in there, but that ought to work. All right, well, these need to be 7 16 like with the other one mounted up and I'm, I'm nearly positive I'll, I'll have to double check and, and the reality is I'm gonna have to put a ball joint in one of these and so I can put the spindle on and do some testing but I am happy to see that there is uh, you know the this is probably actually down closer to the coil over than the other and we still have clearance um, considering it's probably going to ride somewhere up in here and have a range of motion like this, uh, it's not an issue. And, and that's one thing about this style, since the Himes are going to be straight, you know, perpendicular, 90 degrees, plumb, whatever you want to call it, to the, uh, to the bolt, they will hinge, you know, way farther than that other style. Not sure why it would be needed. The difference being is it's kind of a pain in the butt. You got to pull this bolt, pull the arm out a little bit, twist this in or out depending on which way you want the arm to go, and then put the bolt back in. Uh, so it is adjustable. You can get it dialed in where you want it. You're just not going to be easily able to easily change it like the other one. The other one is designed so that you go to the track, you can dial in more or less of whatever you want, and then put it back where you had it when you leave and you drive home okay so these guys are drifting and stuff like that um, that's basically what the other arm is for so I'm real pleased to see the clearance that means I don't have to mess with more with changes to to this shape lengthening that no problem whatsoever that's that's easy god you know I should I should look and see what I have for spindle mock-ups <laughs> I could 3d print enough of the spindle you know to handle the ball joint mounts oh man maybe what i should do is 3d print a ball joint for the bottom that i can put in and out oh you know i could actually just take an old ball joint turn down the body so that it comes up in here uh easily that way i don't have to press it in and press it out this is a hard body spindle and i've just got it loosely mounted up there now that's going to sit on the ball joint probably about there, I'm guessing. And keep in mind this arm is going to be up a little bit because there should be about an inch of compression here uh, with the vehicle riding on it. That's roughly where it should be set. If it's three inches of travel, uh, you're going to want one inch of 
extension and two inches of compression. Anyway, if it's sitting right there, you know, this will articulate a long way. Okay, this ball joint probably has more travel than the Chrysler one. I don't know. I don't really want to set the Chrysler one back up again. Uh, this is the only one I'm really concerned with because I got to figure out that length there or whatever. So, the one inch. So, I've given myself one inch of compression here is, is what I was after. Okay. Now, let's... Uh, Let's check this because this is actually a good bit easier to use. Yeah, that's about an eighth of an inch too short. One degree right there, so it's a gain of four degrees. My goal here isn't to get it aligned perfectly. I, my goal here is to make sure that everything I did before, uh, when I figured this out the first time, that these arms are the length I need them. And just looking at it, I got pretty dang close to the same amount of screw showing there. That should be pretty dang close. I like that a lot. 